Hello all, I am Sujit Sugumaran and I welcome you all to my atomic talk on this topic, AWS for testing top three use cases. Before going into the use cases part, let's look at this important question called, is AWS something meant for quality engineers given the learning curve and the vast scope of AWS? Is it really worthwhile to go for us to uh, explore and learn AWS? The answer is a strong yes. Um, this, uh, there are three reasons why I say this. Number one, uh, we are seeing a, a increased adoption of cloud from, from private cloud to public to hybrid to multi-cloud. We are seeing a lot of things happening in that particular space. And also we are seeing a lot of cloud native applications being built. At this point, it makes very, very logical step for us to understand how a cloud ecosystem works. The other reason is that when we are learning cloud, we also learn about other things as well. Importantly, about how a system generally works. We learn about uh, the performance of a system, the scalability, the availability of it. What is the failover mechanism like? Um, what is the resiliency of the system? So that really makes our whole perspective of quality a little, little broader. Uh, rather than just focusing on the testing aspect, we think about a lot of other aspects as well. That really helps. And the third part is that AWS itself uh, supports a lot of testing use cases. So once you are into AWS, you can easily spot different services and different solutions which are provided by AWS to help different testing use cases. So that's also a great advantage you get once you understand or learn AWS. Now going into the use cases part, the number one thing is uh, how we can make use of AWS for mobile and web testing. So we have a service called AWS Device Farm, which is a testing service, which we can make use uh, for testing our Android, iOS applications and uh, web applications. The important thing is that uh, you get an opportunity to test on an array of actual real physical devices when it comes to Device Farm. Uh, and you, there are two ways in which you can uh, particularly do the mobile testing using device farm. Uh, you can do automated testing. Uh, so if you already have automated testing frameworks or scripts already with you using Appium or Calabash or XC test or whatever it could be, you can upload those scripts into device farm and also your application, which is an APK file or IPA file. And then you can do automated tests using device farm. But imagine you don't have any kind of uh, automated scripts already developed. In that case, device farm uh, helps you with running its own first tests or exploratory tests on your uploaded application. So that's how you can perform automated tests using device farm. But if you want a more kind of a manual way of uh, testing on different uh, devices within AWS, then you can do that also uh, using this particular option called the remote access. This is how you can particularly make use of device farm. Let's go into the console and see how uh, it generally work. So this is uh, a, a mobile device testing project I created some time back. Uh, let's go in here and you have this option of automated test and remote access. Let's go with the automated option. So I'm going to come here and there is a five step process involved wherein you can create a run. So I already had a, a APK file uploaded. So I'm making use of that one. That is step number one. The next step is to actually decide what is your kind of testing you're going to do. Like what framework are you going to do? What kind of tests are you going to execute here? So since I don't have any kind of automated tests, I'm going with the first test. In the third step, you need to choose on which all devices you're going to test. You can either go with the top devices AWS themselves present to you, or if you want to create from a device pool, uh, you can choose from different OS versions. Since this is Android showing only Android devices, you can select what is your OS choice, what's the form factor you require and all. And accordingly, you can customize your device lists here. So I'm going with the top devices option here and going to the next uh, uh, fourth step of this process wherein if you want to have some additional software so if you want to set a wi-fi particular state or if you want to select some location or locale if you want to do any of these customization you can do that as well 
and finally go for the run. So it takes uh, some time to run and show the results. Let's wait a bit. Now the execution is complete and you can see all the three tests passed on all the three devices. If you click open any of those, you can see a video of what are the tests run. And also if you want to get the screenshots, that's also available here. And additionally, you can get all the uh, logs for different tests already run. So that's how device farm work. And when it comes to the pricing, you have different price options to choose from. Uh, you can pay for a particular device minute if you want to do that. Or if you want to have more flexibility around the underlying devices, then you can select a device slot and pay for the whole slot per month. Uh, when it comes to desktop browsers, you pay for every instance minute you run. The second use case, which I want to talk uh, about AWS today for testing is uh, the distributed load testing. So DLT is a kind of a solution which is already built by AWS to support load testing and made available to us. Uh, underlying, they make use of Taurus as the open source framework for load testing. And it's also making use of different uh, AWS services and it packages everything together as a load testing API and makes it available for us as a ready to launch cloud formation template. So it takes just a few minutes to launch uh, the whole application uh, and the whole infrastructure. So you can readily launch it and you get a web UI console. Therein you can upload your uh, JMeter or any of your load test scripts there and you can decide what is the number of threads you want to execute, what's the ramp up time on all those kind of things. So again, let's go to the console and see it. So this is the DLT solution page. Here you can come and you can click on this option called launch in AWS console. You can create the stack from here. So the stack creation is uh, fully completed and you get a CloudFront URL exposed. And that is this web uh, console, UI console. Here you can come to create tests and you can decide what kind of tests you want to run here. So I'm going with JMeter. And I'm uploading a JMX script here. This can be keeping my right uh, number of users as 50 and maybe concurrency as 10 ramp up time two minutes or for one minute and let's run this Now the load test run is complete and it took almost like 10 minutes to uh, simulate 50 users. And you get to see like, what, how is the test results looking like? What is the average response time? What's the percentile response time? What's the average latency connection time? How has been the errors? All these kind of things you get to see the results here on this same dashboard. So that's how you can easily, very easily without having the difficulties of uh, setting up some infrastructure, you can very easily come and execute your load tests on AWS. Now we can come back and uh, delete this whole infrastructure so that we don't incur additional charges. And the third solution, which I want to tell today to you is all about like how we can do resiliency tests on AWS. 
the traditional testing uh, is aimed to cover or uncover the known issues or known problems uh, within the system. But what about the actual production? It's quite unpredictable. Uh, a lot of unknowns are there. How can we easily identify those kind of hidden areas? Or how can we understand the boundaries of our system? That's what you get to achieve by doing chaos engineering tests. So chaos engineering as a practice is kind of uh, cross-domain discipline. There is testing involved. There is DevOps. There is SRE elements involved. So if you want to uh, do chaos engineering tests, uh, you have a service called Fault Injection Simulator. So what happens in this one is like you make some assumptions or hypothesis about your production behavior. Say like this is my maximum CPU utilization. Like if the CPU utilization or memory consumption goes beyond this particular limit, this is how I expect my system to be to behave. Uh, so you can validate your assumptions. You can make uh, clarity about how your assumptions is really going to work in the production by injecting purposeful uh, faults or kind of chaos into your production. So as you can understand from this particular image, uh, you have certain experiment templates already defined for you by AWS. So these are all typical kind of failure uh, solutions or failure templates uh, you get uh, in AWS ecosystem, which means like you have uh, suddenly your DB coming down or your whole availability zone coming down, or you have a certain amount of latency or memory utilization happening on your resources. So these are all experiment templates made available for you. If you want to design your own templates, that's also possible. So with using these templates, you can inject chaos into your AWS resources or infrastructure. And when you do that, you can always monitor your AWS resources. You can keep a watch on your metrics. Whenever uh, your metrics hits the uh, threshold levels, uh, alarm is triggered. So when that alarm level uh, is reached, your experiments get stopped automatically. So by doing this kind of an exercise, you get to understand your, the boundaries of your system. And if you feel like those things are really good, then you can be really confident about your system, uh, about your big release days and all. But if you feel like those things has to be, there is a scope for improvement, you need uh, certain improvements to be made to your infrastructure, then you can make adjustments accordingly. So that's how you achieve uh, re resiliency tests. You, you perform resiliency tests to understand the performance, the scalability, the limitations of your system. Uh, that's the third use case, which I want to talk about today. So I have included all these additional resources, uh, the links, everything available here. And also I'll be here around to answer any of your questions if you're interested. Uh, have uh, fun enjoying the rest of the talks at TestFlix 2022. Thank you. Thank you so much.